I'm going to show you how to turn a zombie or skeleton spawner into a zombie and skeleton experience grinder. You're going to need that experience to do lots of enchantments, and this is a great way to get all the loot that the zombies are dropping. So stick around, I'm going to show you how. Today we are going to teach you how to make a zombie and skeleton experience grinder. Now, if you've been following our series on Minecraft and some of the other videos that we've shown you, you know how to set up a server on a Raspberry Pi. You know how to get started in your Minecraft world. And now we're going to show you what to do if you're in the middle of mining and you come across a spawner. Now, specifically, this is for zombies and for skeletons. It will not work for your spiders, your cave spiders, all that kind of stuff. A zombie and skeleton grinder is essentially a... Um, tool for funneling spawned mobs into a focal point so that you can easily kill them and collect the experience and the loot that drops from them. So we're going to go and I'm going to show you kind of what you need to do to get started and what you're going to end up with as your final product as you see behind me. This is a spawner. You can see that there's a little tiny zombie spinning around inside. It looks like a uh, kind of a jail cage. And if you're mining, you're going to come across one eventually. It's in a small room that's about uh, maybe 10 blocks wide. And this will create an infinite supply of, of mobs that are going to come at you. As soon as you find it, you want to A, kill the mobs that are there, but B, you also want to disable the spawner. And you do that by putting torches on all of the sides and on top. And that's going to disable your spawner. At that point, you can start working on the giant box that's going to go around it that's going to funnel everything over to a system like that. Now, before you get started, you're going to need to have an infin infinite water source because you do need water for this build. And so with that, I want to show you how infinite water works. So we're going to empty this out and the water disappears. If I add a water bucket to one side, it flows over and you can see how the water tapers off and you can see that directional flow from left to right. If I then try and collect the water in the center, nothing happens. If I collect it over here, nothing happens. I collect that block, it disappears. So to create an infinite water source, you need to create three blocks wide of a hole and put water on either side. And then that center block fills up and I can start collecting it, and the two blocks on either side with water are going to fill that up, so you now have an infinite supply of water. Now, to get started with your grinder, you're going to need several things. A sign, you're going to need a couple of those. Uh, you want to bring at least four. You're going to need your building blocks for this monstrosity beside me. Now, most of that you'll be able to make with cobblestone because you're going to collect that as you're mining anyway. You're going to need your water bucket to create your, your infinite water supply, You'll need a hopper to collect the drops from the mobs after you kill them. You're going to need some metal or some slabs. So you can use stone slabs, you can use wood slabs, whatever you want, as long as it's a half block height. You'll need torches and you'll need one block of soul sand. You can collect that from the nether, uh, which is the kind of like the underworld of Minecraft and your scaffolding, which is dirt. That's the simplest, it's the easiest scaffolding to use. Now, before we go into the uh, zombie grinder and show you kind of what it looks like, we're gonna take a quick break and then I'm gonna give you all the details you need on how big that space needs to be in order for your uh, experience grinder to work really well. So now that you have found your spawner uh, for a zombie or a skeleton, you need to dig out a massive room around it. Um, the room that it comes in is only about 10 blocks wide. You need to dig out significantly further because the mechanics of Minecraft when it comes to these spawners is it will spawn that particular mob within five blocks of either side, up, down, left, right, wherever, from that spawner. And so you want to have a room that goes five blocks wide on either side and five blocks above and below. And as you can see in here, that's what this room fits. And I've, I've used some marked blocks here so you can count. You've got one, two, three, four, five blocks above the level that the spawner is. 
and one, two, three, four, five blocks below. If you do not make this room five blocks above, below, all around, you have the potential of, of the zombie or the skeleton spawning outside of that box, and then it's not going to work as well. When you are done making your giant room like this, and it has to be a square, you're going to need to place water on the two outside corners opposite of where you want your mobs to funnel. So I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to put one here. Now, as you can see, the water doesn't go all the way across the floor. And so when the zombies spawn in here, the water is going to push them but it's only going to push them so far. So we need to make uh, an adjustment to this room that's going to allow them to go even further. And so for that, I'm going to take you to the other room that I've made so you can see everything in completion. So what I've done is where the water runs to, you can see the edging of it. I've removed one block in so that the water then flows over the edge of those blocks and pushes to the center. And with those two water sources in either corner, all of the water funnels to this section right here, no matter where the mobs spawn in the room. Once you have done that, you need to clear all the torches from the room and place a slab on top of the spawner. The reason why you want to use a slab is because the zombies will not spawn on a half block. They will only spawn on whole blocks. And with that, slab being there, no, no zombie is going to spawn on top of it and then potentially stay there and not want to fall off because you want them to spawn in the water and be funneled to you. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to remove the um, torches, but I will show you the rest of the build and how it works. So the water then flows into this little funnel point. Um, now, I've used it out of glass so that you can see how it works but you can use stone, whatever you want. And when you get inside the tube, there's two signs. The reason for those signs is to stop the water in this upwards elevator shaft, so to speak, from flowing back into that giant room. So the water will push the zombies into here. And as they pile up in this tube, they'll start pushing one another into this water elevator. Now with the mechanics of Minecraft, uh, you have to have soul sand underneath water to push them up. It creates bubbles um, that's going to push the zombies up. And in order to for this to work, you have to have a unique water block every level of that channel. So there's a water block here, a water block here, a water block here, and here, all the way up to the top. And that's why you want your infinite water source. Because if I just put a water block at the top, the water is going to fall all the way down and then you're not going to get those bubbles. It needs to be unique bubbles every time. Now, with the mechanics of zombies, they are 20 health points plus two armor points, even if they don't have armor themselves. So when a zombie or a skeleton falls, they lose half a heart or half a health point for every block that they drop. So if they drop two blocks, they lose one heart. If they drop four blocks, they lose two hearts. And because they've got 20 hearts and two health points, they can fall a total of 22 blocks before that wipes them out. Obviously, we don't want them to fall to their death. We want them to fall 21 blocks. So with this, I'm going to call it water elevator, we need to make sure that we go up high enough that it's going to be pushed them to the, to the max limit that when they fall, they're going to be completely reduced on health, but without dying. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and each of these green blocks is five. Your upwards elevator needs to be five, 10, 15, 20, and then 20, um, 21 or 24 blocks. When you get to the top, what you need to do, oh, don't want to fall down the hole. There we go. I did anyway, is you can see these bubbles. That's the bubbles that comes from the soul sand. And then there's a water source that's going to uh, push them over the edge. And I leave them a nice message, enjoy the fall. So that when the zombies come down or the skeletons come down, they're going to be pushed down the tube and fall onto your hopper. And this is where you want to have your half slabs, leaving just a small gap where on the other side, you can then hit them at their feet 
with just your bare hands and their experience uh, is going to go to you. The loot is going to fall into the chest through the hopper and boom, you now have a zombie grinder. So I'm going to play the purpose or the spot of a zombie in this case and show you exactly how it works. I am not moving. You can see that my hands are off the keyboard control. It's just the water that's moving me now. I'm turning around. I've hit that point where there is no water because of these signs. So as other mobs come in, it's going to push you into the elevator, pop me up, and then down I go. That's the mechanics of the zombie and skeleton experience grinder. And now what I want to do is hop into the game and show you an actual working copy that's on the um, category five Minecraft test server that we've made for the show. This is an actual working zombie grinder in uh, the world. And as you can see, zombies are starting to get pushed through. The room is actually quite dark. Um, I'm not gonna open it up right now, but you can see through there that it's quite dark. There's no torches and zombies are starting to spawn. And as this tube fills up, it's gonna push the zombies up the chute that continues up significantly higher into the rest of the, the mine there. And then they're gonna drop down just over here. Oh look, one's already dropped. Um, and as they go up, you know, you'll see there's this tube here that'll push them up. And then you're gonna see them drop down here. And now this zombie that's been captured in here, oh, there goes one. And here's a couple that's gonna fall and boom. And you can see they kind of go red when they hit the ground. It's because their health has been taken away. And so now I can just go over here and a couple of hits and they're dead. And so two hits, those zombies go and I'm getting the experience from it. And this hopper is now collecting all the resources and putting them in the chest. But in the case of here, we don't have anything in this chest and that's because we've actually made a hopper system with many, many chests. So there's the chest that they fall into. The hoppers continue to process everything down until you get to that bottom chest and there's the flesh from the zombies that I just killed. And that's how you make a zombie or skeleton experience grinder. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and you'll be able to use it as you play Minecraft. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, lots of good stuff, lots of good content. You don't want to miss any of that. And just a reminder that the tutorial world that I've got going on, you can download that at the link below. You can play with it yourself, see how it all works, and then replicate that in your own world. And uh, stick around because we're going to have lots and lots more content coming up. And that's why you want to make sure that you're watching what we got going on. See ya.